It's early August 2025, so three years since we had solar power installed. In that time, we've generated over 10 megawatt hours of electricity, but our payback period has actually got longer. Why is that? And what, if anything, has gone wrong? Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to the Handyman at Home channel and my three year solar power review. So, late July 2022 and we've taken the plunge and invested just under £11,000 for a system comprising two banks of six Jinko Solar 375 watt panels installed on broadly east and west facing roof pitches. These were set up to feed a Solis 3.6 kilowatt hybrid inverter installed in the garage together with two Pylon Tech US 3000C batteries with a total storage capacity of 7 kilowatt hours. Using the PV GIST tool, the projected annual output for our 4.5 kilowatt peak panel array came out at 3329 kilowatt hours, with the east facing bank generating slightly more than the west facing bank. Taking the first 12 month period, that's August 22 to July 23, we see that we generated 3,606 kilowatt hours, which is about 8% more than the PV GIST projection. One of the things that had become increasingly clear during that first year was that we could really benefit from some additional battery storage capacity. With that in mind, I dipped into the piggy bank and purchased another Pylon Tech battery module, this time a US 5000 with 4.8 kilowatt hour capacity. Installing this was reasonably straightforward as I covered in this video, resulting in us now having a total of 11.8 kilowatt hour battery storage. Looking at the second 12 month period then, that's August 23 to July 24, we were disappointed to see that we'd only managed to generate 3,146 kilowatt hours, which is 5% less than the PV GIST projection. But it's clear that was predominantly down to the above average figures for May, June and August 2023, rather than being anything amiss with the system. On to year three then, and two further enhancements to the system. The first comprised a simple addition to the inverter to provide a backup AC output, which can be used in the case of a grid outage, as I showed in this video. The second, much more involved upgrade, was to install a couple of additional panels onto our flat garage roof. After choosing some Trina Vertex 450 watt panels, this resulted in an increase to our array size of 20%, going from 4.5 kilowatt peak to 5.4 kilowatt peak. My thinking behind this was to increase our generation capacity for a relatively small cost and hopefully also reduce our payback time for the system as a whole. Returning to the PV GIST tool then, I calculated the projected output from the two new panels, noting that they have a slope angle of 15 degrees as compared to the main arrays which are at 41 degrees. This gave us a new projected annual output of 4052 kilowatt hours as compared to the initial system value of 3329. Looking then at our generation figure for the third year we can see that at 3839 kilowatt hours this is by far our best performance although I suggest that it's as much to do with the extremely sunny weather during the early part of the year as it is the additional two panels. Totalling up over the three years gives a figure of almost 10.6 megawatt hours, which is within 2% of the cumulative PV GIST projection. So all looking good then. And apart from intermittent code 2015 alarms, we've had no significant issues during that time, touch wood. In my two year review video last year, I presented a payback calculation using a methodology shown in Gary Does Solar's video on tracking your solar installation payback. I'll include a link to his video in the description, together with links to the other videos I've referred to in this one. There were a few comments made regarding whether this method gives a true payback calculation, given that it doesn't take into account inflation, interest rates, the price of gold or bitcoins, or even Donald's latest grand idea. But be that as it may, I feel it does give a worthwhile comparison of the cumulative electricity cost with solar, including any capital expenditure, versus the cumulative electricity cost without solar. And I make no other claims than that. 
The first thing to do is to enter any capital expenditure, which in our case consists of the initial installation cost of just under £11,000. We then add the actual electricity cost for each month. This is the net cost taken directly from our octopus bills, that's what we've been charged for, less any payments received for export. Not that any data you enter into the spreadsheet is shown in red, with all the other figures being calculated automatically. Then, for each month in turn, you enter the total amount of electricity used in kilowatt hours, the standard import rate per kilowatt hour, and the dead weight that is the daily standing charge. Once you've done this, the spreadsheet will generate a straight line estimate of the break even point, which as we can see at the end of the first year came to 12.2 years, corresponding to a date of 8th of October 2034. Very precise indeed. Adding in the data for the second year, up to and including July 2024, we see the break even point has come in somewhat to 11.7 years despite the £1,400 we spent on the US 5000 battery module. And yes, I know you can now get them for a lot less than £1,000. Such is life. And then, bringing us right up to date by adding in the data for the third year, we see the break-even point has now gone back out to around 12.6 years, pushing that date all the way to 19th of February 2035. This is only to be expected, I guess, given the £800 or so cost associated with installing the two additional panels on the garage roof. As an aside, one commenter said there was no way it would cost so much. Well, I'll include the actual costs again here for anyone who doubts me. For sure, there was probably a cheaper way to go about it, but the figures are the figures. Anyhow, what does all this mean in practice, given that nobody really has any idea what electricity prices will be in the future? Well, I'd argue not much really, apart from the bleeding obvious that if you carry on spending money on your system, the payback period, in the short term at least, will just get longer. I'm still fairly confident that the two additional panels will result in the payback period coming down over time, but we'll have to wait until next August to see what impact they've had over a full year or so. A good reason to make sure you're subscribed then, so you don't miss out when that video gets released. I think it's unlikely that we'll invest any more into our system, as we really can't make use of the additional electricity we generate, given we still use gas for hot water and central heating. We have, however, started to make use of our hot water immersion heater again, rather than exporting power during non-peak hours, given the reduction we've seen in those export rates. I haven't tried to calculate the value of that, but I suspect it will be fairly negligible in the scheme of things perhaps a couple of kilowatt hours per day. So, to summarise, we're generating pretty much the amount of electricity you'd expect for a system of this size installed in this location, and we've not had any major problems so far, and long may it stay like that. Following installation of the new panels and our increased generating capacity, we started increasing the amount of power we exported back to the grid during the peak period between 4 and 7 p.m. We also reduced the amount of electricity we imported during the low-cost early morning period as well. Both those, as much as anything else, will probably help reduce our payback period. Okay then, I will think I'll call this one done. Hope you found it of some interest. If so, please do give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one. Cheers.